Welcome, friends, new and old, to this week's episode of Forbes Flash. Anyone else feel like it's been a really long week? There's a lot happening, so it makes sense. Georgia-based startup Grayshift claims its gray key tool can unlock even the latest iPhone models. And now they have a new client, ICE. According to government records, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement acquired the services of Grayshift earlier this month, with a single order of almost $400,000. So, what might they be using this tool for? Human rights activists are concerned it might be used to invade the privacy of immigrants. Given recent controversy around the separation of children from their parents and Trump's hardline policies, I'd say this is something to keep a close eye on. Now for a seriously cool opportunity. We just launched Forbes Fellows, a chance for exceptional young leaders to join us at our Under 30 Summit in Boston as our guest. It's going to be an incredible four days, filled with talks from speakers like John Kerry, Whitney Wolfhard, and Gary Vee, plus tons of networking and fun. Visit this URL to apply, and I hope to see you there. Okay, let's be real. We all like to save money, unless you're one of the billionaires we're always talking about here at Forbes. But since you're likely not, you'll find this week's quick tips extra helpful. How to save enough money to retire early. Specifically, this time we're talking about the craziest ways millennials have kept cash, since everybody loves to copy millennials, right? Here's a few of my faves. Keeping the thermostat at 55 degrees in the winter brings new meaning to the phrase sweater weather, I guess. Picking a fake engagement ring. Apparently no one seems to notice the difference between masonite and diamonds. Living in a 52 square foot room. I already told you how small my apartment is, but this is pretty extreme. I'm claustrophobic just thinking about it, but oh, the money you could save. Let us know if you've tried any of these money-saving techniques or anything crazier by sharing with hashtag Forbes Flash. Speaking of people you might want to befriend, billionaire Michael Rubin just closed on a $43.5 million penthouse in New York City's West Village. Turns out even the 791st richest person in the world likes a good deal. The unit was originally priced at $51 million. Even discounted, it's still one of the most expensive sales between 14th Street and Manhattan. Not surprising since it's 7,750 square feet. By the way, I did the math and that's literally 20 times the size of my humble abode. Mr. Rubin is part owner of the Philadelphia 76ers and the CEO of Kinetic, the company that oversees retailers. If I were him, I'd consider my full-time job to be enjoying the perks of this new apartment, which includes four fireplaces, a massive roof terrace with a private pool, and a screening room. Here's a few stories you might have missed this past week. You obviously know what happened in the aftermath of the collapse of Lehman Brothers and the resulting chaos that shook Wall Street. Over a million Americans lost their homes to foreclosure, and millions more lost their jobs. But what the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers meant for Scott Norton was an opportunity to go after a business idea he'd been working on since his senior year at Brown University, a better catch-up. Believe it or not, that industry hasn't been disrupted in decades, so Norton and his friends decided there was a market. A few years after the collapse, they built Sir Kensington's, a condiment company designed to take on Heinz. Fast forward to now, the company is nationwide in high-end restaurants and supermarkets. Norton credits the collapse for his catch-up success. That experience, he says, quote, has given me perspective that values creativity and values stability over a maniacal accumulation of wealth. If you're into feeling nostalgic, Sony has just the thing for you. They're going to be releasing a PlayStation Classic this December, which comes preloaded with 20 games. TBD on a full list of those 20, but a few we already know about include popular games like Final Fantasy VII and Wild Arms. And if the move to release a micro console in an ode to the past sounds familiar, that's because it is. Nintendo released the NES and SNES Classic Edition early this year. Not into nostalgia? Try living in the moment like Rachel Maddow. The MSNBC host celebrated 10 years of her show with the highest weekly rating since it premiered in 2008. She's now the network's top-rated primetime host and last week drew an average audience of 3.43 million viewers. That made Maddow the most watched cable news show for the week too, beating out CNN and Fox News Channel. Not bad for a 10-year anniversary gift. And now a little something for the K-pop fans out there. And I know you're out there. This week marked the one year anniversary of the birth of BTS' Love Yourself album trilogy. While each album individually set records, perhaps the most notable accomplishment of Love Yourself was helping BTS achieve notoriety in the US. America has been a late adopter of the global K-pop phenomena, but we're here now, so don't blame us for taking a while to catch up. And seriously, I mean it, the rest of the world gets it. 
Tear charted at number one on iTunes in 73 countries, and BTS is on a world tour with 33 sold out stadium sized concerts. So what I'm saying is, they're a big deal. Happy anniversary. If you want to escape the chaos that is here on Earth, befriend a guy named Yusaku Meizawa. The billionaire is going to be the first paying tourist aboard SpaceX's BRF spacecraft on a trip around the moon. The founder of online fashion mall Zozotown doesn't plan on taking an intergalactic trip solo. He bought out the entire spaceship and plans to fill it with friends. Get this, six to eight artists from different countries representing different styles of art. He wants these as of yet unnamed artists to be inspired by the journey and make art about it when they return back to Earth. There's a joke there, but I'll move on. The trip is scheduled to take place in 2023, though even Elon Musk admits there might be problems with that date. It will theoretically take four to five days and get passengers as close to 125 miles from the moon. But don't worry, SpaceX isn't spending too much time on this private journey, only 5% of their resources. The rest of their efforts are going toward missions for NASA. Hey, I'm Alex Conrad, an associate editor at Forbes, and on Tuesday I published an exclusive interview with the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. Microsoft showed Forbes first two apps that it has launched for the HoloLens, which is its mixed reality headset. So think augmented reality, you see visual, uh, digital representations of objects over the real world. So imagine a imaginary forklift popping up in your office and you can see how big it is and if there would be room for it. Probably not room here in the Forbes office. But what was cool about these apps is Microsoft partnered with Chevron for the past few months, one of its biggest cloud customers, to see what these apps would do for Chevron's global operations. So what Chevron is doing, and Forbes reported, is that they're gonna have several hundred of their experts use the HoloLens around the world to do repairs on facilities like oil refineries. So what happens today is that these experts have to fly, let's say to Australia from California and back, they could fly for three days to do an hour of work. What Satya was telling us about is that with the HoloLens, they can basically be there virtually from their home office, see everything that the person wearing the headset sees, even circle things and otherwise mark up what's being shown on a screen. And that way, they can find what's broken and fix it without actually having to rack up all those miles. So why this is significant is that it's the first two apps that Microsoft is releasing, uh, Remote Assist and Layout, for this headset, which could be a really big source of business for Microsoft and the first really commercially used mixed reality uh, device. For long-term implications, that can also impact Microsoft's challenge on Salesforce. So Microsoft has a product suite of software called Dynamics 365, which is used for everything from office work software, like their collaboration tools, to their CRM software, which is their direct competitor to Salesforce's customer management software. So Dynamics 365 data will go into the HoloLens and help them keep track of who they're talking to, what customers are being served with this technology, and then it all goes onto Microsoft's cloud called Azure. So put it all together, and Satya said this could be a pretty major shift in the capabilities that Microsoft is offering huge companies like Chevron, and it could kind of shift the balance a little bit in their challenge towards Salesforce long term. Congrats on making it through the week and also this episode. We'd love to hear your feedback, which you can send using hashtag Forbes Flash. We'll be back next week, same time, same place.